So we went. Hmm, yeah, yeah, easy for me to say. Welcome back to Up All Night. Now, last time we kind of got the best ending. Near as I can tell, that's easily the best ending. So, this time, we're going to go through and try and see all the alternate paths that we didn't see before. There's a lot we missed. I think I'm going to do that by just jumping back to the beginning and start taking alternate paths, alternate choices, and see what happens. Like, for example, no, I'm not shaking your hand. I pulled my jacket closed and ignored his extended hand. What's with this guy? I'm sure he said his dad owns the cabins, but why the heck is he here so freaking late? It was fully dark now, and the wind had died down around the cabin. A gentle sprinkle of snow replaced the flurry that was falling earlier. There were still heavy storm clouds rolling over the mountain road in the distance. The clouds are still so thick over the road hip here, but it's still snowing like crazy in the pass. There's no way she's getting back up tonight. Um, so... Is everything to your liking? Crapper staring off. Um, uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, yeah, it's fine. Alright, and let's progress. I believe we invited him in last, uh, last time. Which, knowing what we know now... If you haven't if you haven't watched part two, go back and watch part two. Cause I'm about, I'm about to spoil a twist from part two. Five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, I, I won't say it flat out, just in case you're still watching for some reason. But knowing what we know now about Felix, it's a very bad idea to invite him in. It's the line outside. Yeah, but I think it's the line outside. Do you know how to fix something like that? A pinched look flickered across his face. Does he look... disappointed? Does he want to come in and hang out or something? He shrugged and smiled again. No harm in looking, I suppose, but I'll probably need to call a technician. He turned to make his way over to the panel on the side of the cabin, pushing through the calf-high snow the storm had left in its wake. I should probably go check it out with him. He's in dress pants and is still taking a look at it for me. I zipped up my jacket and followed him to the utility panel. He was examining the wiring when I caught up. He looked pensive, his brow furrowed. Did you hear anything strange when the phone cut out? No, the phone just went dead. It was pretty loud outside, though. Why? Oh... There were gouges that looked like claw marks across the siding of the cabin, a severed wire hanging in between the scratches. Well, I guess that's why it isn't working. Felix turned around and grinned, looking me dead in the eyes. He fiddled with the detached wire, twisting it between his fingers. Well, I think I found your problem. Good thing it missed the power box, so you'd be in the dark, too. I think I really do need to catch that bear. What? A bear? Are they dangerous? his hand on my shoulder, a serene smile on his face. Wish he'd stop looking at me like that. He leaned in, his face so close that my exhaled breath made his hair sway. Boundaries, dude. Only little joke. My father is a good hunter. He'll take care of it. Uh, okay. Well, you better get back inside. I hate for you to get eaten. I hear some beasts don't care if you're dead before they consume you. He snorted. There was something weirdly funny about the way he said that. Laying on the ground, guts hanging out, no one will die when someone eats at my insides? Guess I deserve that. Uh. Cold was making my right leg ache and I rubbed it at absently. I guess there are worse things than being dead. Like having someone die in front of you? I wasn't smiling anymore. Our eyes locked for a moment before I looked away. He was so near to me that I couldn't see anything beside his icy blue eyes. Why do I feel like he knows what I'm thinking? I don't really want to die, but I don't know. Would it be so bad? I, I don't know. No, I suppose you would admit to something like that. 
Have a good night, Nick. See you around. Whoosh. Felix walked past me as he spoke, his breath as cool as the air around me. He walked by so closely that his arm brushed alongside mine. I hurried back inside, not bothering to watch him head back out to the main road. Yeah, in hindsight, a lot of Felix's behavior is really throwing up those certain red flags, weren't they? All right, let us progress. You know what? No, don't come over. Sorry, my mom, my mom should be back by then. I don't think... Well, I mean, maybe tomorrow night? That'll give me time to ask. Also give me time to think of a better excuse. Are you a child? Do you need to ask your mother for permission to breathe, too? What? No, but it's kind of messed up not to let her know first. She's the one right in the cabin, not me. He thrust the basket he was holding into my arms and waved his hand dismissively. Very well. I will come back tonight to ask. Permission from your mother, provided the road is cleared and she returns. Unless you don't want me to. Holy knows I'm trying to turn him down. Seems pretty irritated. Nice guys finish last, Nick. <laughs> Look, I'm just not looking for any friends right now. I, um, I see. Well, maybe you'll change your mind. See you tonight. He turned and left, leaving me holding the basket. Just great, I'm gonna have to deal with him again tonight. Here, I'll trap the contents of the, bas contents of the basket. Inside were a couple of bottles of sparkling water and a bunch of individually wrapped toffees along with a bag of off-brand peach, peach rings. Oh, my favorite, peach rings. Weird gift, but I guess he was trying to be just trying to be nice in his own strange way. And let us progress. Uh, it's grace in time. How bad could things get if we uh, refuse the call of friendship? You're so nosy. I don't need not need. I don't need to deal with this right now. I ignored her and bent down to take a closer look. Wow. Okay. Just trying to be friendly. By the way, I'm Grayson. Not like you asked or anything. You asked or nothing. Nick. Wow. Go me. Way to sound like a total asshole, man. Ugh. Well, too late now. I stared back down at the deer, but I was sure the exasperated sigh she gave behind my back also came with an eye roll. Okay, maybe she isn't so bad. Sorry, I'm being an ass. So, you want to check out this deer? He still looked kind of pissed, but then broke out into a grin. Hell yeah! Alright, looky looky. Oh, this just this does change something. What the heck is your problem? She looked embarrassed. Sorry, you looked... Uh, I don't know. Forget it. She peered over my shoulder, eyes fixed on the, on the deer's crushed windpipe. Didn't you, just say, didn't you say something about a bear? Ah, yeah. About that. Well, we've resisted, resisted the call of friendship. Let us continue to resist the call of friendship. Yoink. Pulled my hand out of hers. I think it's a little early for you to think of me as a friend. But why? What's the big deal? I don't really make friends, okay? I've just met you. She tensed up and stared back down at the tracks. Fine, whatever. She started walking off on her own and not bothering to look back. Oh man, I think she's pretty pissed. Look, I didn't mean it like that. I just want to get to know you first. She stopped and turned back towards me, a small twinkle in her eye. Oh. You you mean that? Uh, yes? Well, I better tell you about myself. Ah. <laughs> Grayson is immune to resisting the call of friendship. In a way that's really wholesome. Bless her heart. Bless her heart. Okay, we do not want to do this. Wait, there might be something important here. We should at least look around. We should at least look around first. She didn't look happy, but nodded in agreement and stepped back. Oh, okay, we can learn a little bit more at least. Examine the body. My eyes were locked on the body. I wanted to look away, but it was so horrible that I couldn't. 
kept staring at them after they were dead, too. I'm disgusting. And his leg. It's been ripped clean off. She was right. Not cut, but ripped. They were stringy ligaments that had frozen like grim icicles where the leg had been torn off. Uh-oh. Uh, I... Even though it was night, the ground was still warm from the summer sun. Uh, Bree. Bree, are you okay? My vision was blurry. Something kept dripping in my eyes. I tried to brush it away, but it was sticky. It's blood. I... I'm bleeding. Oh, we, we, uh, we missed these my first run. Like a missing piece in the progressive flashback we're being... Nick is being subjected to. I tried to stand up, but a shooting pain arced up my leg, and I toppled to the ground again. This is immediately after the crash. It was very much something traumatic that we remembered about Bree. That, uh... We didn't actually see happen in a flashback, but definitely happened, and it was not good for poor Nick. For anyone involved, I, I think it's broken. Like, this feels like it's right after the crash. I reached out, groping. There's something laying there, a green shape in the darkness, calling out to me like a beacon. But he was wearing a green dress. I pulled myself closer. It was definitely the shape of a person in the shadows. It had to be her. If only the blood would stop dripping into my eyes, then I could see her. I reached out toward the shape of my hand brushed against something. Fingers. Bree. I grabbed the hand in front of me, but it was limp. No. No, maybe if I pull her over, I can see if she's still... I tried to pull her close. This wet popping sound of the arm came free of the motionless body in front of me. It slid effortlessly into my arms. That's dramatic as fuck! No. No. Bree. I curled around that single limb, paralyzed by the impossible realness of it all. No. No. Nick, you look like you're going to be sick. Raisin put her arm around my shoulder to support me. I leaned on her and tried to control my trembling until I was able to catch my breath. Uh, thanks, I'll be fine. Just give me a second. That leg just... just got to me. Sorry. I can keep it together. Same on the ground. Why don't, we check, why don't we check out the ground? Raisin seemed more than eager to stop looking at the body. It... It's actually, it's kind of weird, huh? She pointed to the ground and I immediately saw what she was talking about. The only prints were a circle of animal tracks around the base of the hanging corpse. There was blood speckled in the snow below, not nearly enough for a disemboweled man. No footprints. But who hung the body then? No drag marks either. There's also the blood-stained divot where the body must have been set before it was strung up. Why the hell aren't there any other prints? Maybe he was hung before the snowstorm. Looked up toward the corpse, shuddering. This is very much some, uh... Extra flavor. That adds to, uh... Questioning both sides of what happened. And not blaming one or the other. In the final act, so to, so to speak. I don't think it really affected anything. Although, I think the only way it would affect something is if we asked her to stay with us and then told her about what happened to us. That might have affected something. So, this this time we're going to let her go alone. I wanted to tell her I understood, but I just couldn't bring myself to do it. Instead, I just stood there stupidly shaking my head. See? Oh, okay. So this is... Pretty much. Hmm. Maybe I may I come in and watch. He's trying to invite himself in again. Let's refuse. You really don't need to see it. I wish I hadn't even made it. All you need to know is somebody hung a man. The police can deal with it. I'll, I'll show it to them. He looks annoyed. Come on, man. You know you don't really want to see it. This is my father's property. 
every right to see what happened to it. Show me the video, Nick. Maybe later. I really don't want to do it right now. It makes me feel sick just thinking about it. Fine, fine. Have it your way, then. Relaxed. I really didn't want to relive that awful moment again. If you really want to see if someone has a way of contacting the town, we should go. It's already getting dark, and I'd prefer not to wake my guests. Uh, hey, you haven't seen a girl around, have you? Grayson? Felix looked at me inside. I got the feeling he wasn't her friend. No, not today. She's, well, certainly a character. Can't stop telling me about how much she hates this place. Her father works for me. Mr. Nash is the caretaker here. I should probably let him know what's happened. Maybe he has a way of contacting the authorities. Oh, um, it was him. Grayson's dad was the one who was murdered. What? Do you know where Miss Nash is? She isn't here, is she? He peered over my shoulder into the cabin. I totally wouldn't be asking him if you've seen her if he was here, though. No, she went off after she... She was there when I... I see. She was there when you found him. Well, maybe we'll run into her. Perhaps she knows something. I hope nothing else has happened. Yeah, just give me a second to grab my phone. Oh, alright. Let us begin the march. I don't remember this choice. Did this happen before? Okay, yeah, we did... Oh, no. Oh no, we locked ourselves into it. Aha! Change the subject. No, I really don't think that you do. I'm sorry about your dad, okay? But you didn't make a choice that got your best friends killed. I still think that it's... No, it isn't. It isn't, it isn't the same. Just leave it alone, okay? What do you even want to know about that? Felix pulled his arms tight around his body. Thought we might mourn together. The hurt. You wanted to stop, don't you? I thought if I could. Uh... Well, never mind. You know what's best, don't you? Yeah, I guess I do. We didn't talk for a few minutes after that. I looked at the ground, avoiding that piercing gaze of his. Well, at the very least, this seems to be a maximum. Uh... Maximum negative Felix points, so to speak. Alright, there's the red. Hmm. Maybe ruining his handkerchief is also a negative point, but this time we're just going to go in. Oh, okay. Nothing new. Hmm. Maybe it's an important... Maybe... Maybe this isn't an important choice. Because when, when I rewound to the other choice, it locked me into it after I picked. Maybe I'm just reading too much into things. I don't know. Oh, no, now we're locked in. All right, let's just go. <laughs> oh, hi, Grayson. We can doubt her. Now we get a ch now we get a choice that's not the true end. Because we uh, strayed the f as far away from as possible from uh, from Nick. Uh, empathizing with others and uh, opening his heart to others somewhat. So let's start with the... Uh...
Trust our friend. Yes, I believe you. Something weird is going on here, but I think she's told me everything she knows. Felix, Grayson just told us what she did that night. What did you do? Alright, so this is familiar. Oh, okay. No, never mind. We can still... Uh... Side with Grayson. Felix, you did this, didn't you? Excuse me? Did I hear that right? You think I did this? I knew it. I knew you'd believe me, Nick. I didn't kill nobody. You're deluded. I'm clearly innocent. You just want to... to... fornicate with this stupid girl or something. You'll say anything. Where the hell did that come from? Is he... jealous? Never mind that. Jealous or not, I think he's the murderer. Nick ain't like that. Just because you go around flirting with everyone doesn't... don't mean that he does. You're telling me I ripped the face off of this woman. I scratched up my own cabin. Ruined my own walls. She came here because she was trying to kill her daughter. She wanted to put an end to the mangy... mangy creature she'd spawned. Its eyes were going wide and feral like a cat's. They focused first on Grayson and then snapped to me when I spoke. Felix... How would you know why her mom came here? He sniffed and stood up straight, fixing his vest with a quick pat. When he looked back at me, he was cold and composed. I don't know for sure, but any parent of this miserable little hell spawn would want to put an end to their unfortunate legacy. You see it? You see? He don't like people. He don't care. He's talking like that about my mama when she's... she's lying there. Your mama thought you were a mistake pointed the shotgun at Felix. Stay back. If we have to sit here all night like this, we will. I've got to turn you in, man. This is ridiculous. A farce. Surely you see. She's had something to do with this, Nick. Are you truly that foolish? I think you've been lying to me. Grayson, I'll watch this guy. You need to let everyone staying up here know what he's done. Nick, I can leave like that. An inhuman hiss cut through the room. What? Uh-oh. That's coming from... Felix. He seemed to grow taller. Eyes filling in with a deep crimson. Teeth elongating. Skin shifting to the hue of a rotted corpse. What? Is he not... human? If you won't see reason, then you leave me no choice. I have refused to be made a fool of, Nick. I stood frozen as he took a step toward me, his skin waxy and corpse-like, his eyes gleaming. I was still pointing the shotgun at him. Nick, shoot! Shoot him! I... Felix, you're... He took a step toward me. He looked at us. His face contorted into a snarl. Stupid of me to think you'd understand. I should have known better. Of course an idiot human boy would side with this little backwoods bitch. He raised his hand like he was going to slap me. Terrible claws glinted at the tops of tips of each of his inhuman fingers. His inhuman fingies? Nick, he's gonna kill you. Shoot! I pulled the trigger and the shotgun went off. Arr! I was thrown back by the force of the shot, unable to hold my balance. I fell landing over the butchered corpse of Grayson's mom. D did I? I looked. can't believe it. Felix's normally perfect vest was full of holes in half of his face. Pellets peppered his perfectly smooth skin as he lay on the ground, twitching. I blew off half his face. Grayson screamed. First I thought it was because of what I had done, but then I realized he was getting back up. Wow. Oh. Still gurgling blood, Felix reached out and clamped his hands around my throat. His grip was so strong, I couldn't breathe. He lifted me up off the ground, and I dangled there, choking. You get off him! Grayson tried to pry his fingers free. He let go of me with one hand, while still keeping a vice-like grip on my throat with the other. He struck out of her with barely a glance and sent her flying. She hit the wall and slid down to the floor. No! You awful 
bitch. How dare you ruin this for me? You were supposed to be mine, Nick. Mine. He hissed the words, droplets of blood and misted flesh flying from the holes I'd made in his cheek. Uh. I squeezed hard and their black spots started pricking the set the sides of my vision. Somewhere I heard Tyler and Bree screaming. Oh! That's not good. I drove my throat loosened and the dark halo cleared from my eyes. I saw Grayson standing behind Felix, eyes wide and wild with rage. Die! You lying murdering coward! Felix toppled to the floor and I fell with him. A deep black pool of ichor spurted from his impaled chest. I stabbed him with the broken leg of a chair and somehow managed to jam it entirely through his heart. Nick, I... You were... I reached out and ran his fingers lightly down the side of my cheek before his hand fell limp and motionless to the floor. Nick, are you okay? He ain't a human. Look at that. She helped me up. Ugh, yeah, I'm okay, but what, what was he? Dix's body started to, started to do disintegrate as we watched, both of us frozen in a strange, fascinated horror. And he burst into flames, and the fire immediately started eating away at the cabin floor. Uh-oh. We have to get out of here. We rushed out of the cabin in hand, tripping over the loose snow in our haste. Let's go to my cabin. We can wait for my mom. That's our best chance of getting out of here. Uh, okay, let's go. I can't stand to be around none of this no more. We ran through the snow, sliding and stumbling as the last traces of dust gave way to full night. I could see the faint glow of the moon rising, but it, still, <clears throat> but it still lay hidden behind the mountainous skyline. I kept glancing behind my back as we neared my cabin. I feel like he's going to show up any minute and finish me off. He can't be. There's no way. Is he really dead? We were at the door. All the lights had been turned off, so the cabin sat in complete darkness. Nick, we made it. Look, you can see that place burning and glowing in the sky up there. Got him. He killed my parents, but we got him. Yeah. Just give me a sec to get the door. I fumbled, I fumbled with the keys. My hands were shaking so badly that I dropped them. Shit. While I was feeling around for them in the dark, Grayson spoke up behind me. Nick, I'm... Feeling kind of sick. Uh, give me a minute. I just... I can't stop thinking about my... The adrenaline's wearing off now. She's probably remembering her mom. Yeah, uh, I'll find you once I get everything opened up. Take as much time as you need. She went off around the side of the cabin where the utility box was, and I heard the sound of her throwing up. It took you a minute, but I got the door open. Grayson, the door's open now if you need the, if you need the bathroom. I stepped inside and tried to turn on the lights. Nothing. Power isn't working now either. At least the moon is lighting everything up now. It's bright tonight. Uh-oh. A shadow slid into that lunar glow and hovered over me. Hot breath tickled the back of my neck. Wh what? I stood there, unable to move. Animal panic rising up inside me, freezing up every joint in my body. <sighs> Something warm and stringy dripped from above me and slid down the side of my face. What? What is that? I looked up slowly and another string hit my face. The head of a huge beast stared back at me, eyes gleaming bright in the moonlight. His grace is safe. She's still outside. I backed, up, I backed up into the cabin. The monster took a rumbling step toward me as I moved inside. The window. Maybe I could make it out of the window. Ah, hello there. The beast stepped fully into the moonlight. I saw it. The ripped shorts. The shirt. Not a bear. A wolf. N no Grayson. Y you did do it. You're a... I tried to bolt for the window, but she was faster. I felt her clamp down on my newly healed leg with a single clench of her jaws, the bone is shattered. <laughs> uh, ah! Grayson, stop! She didn't stop. Instead, she jerked me around, smashed me into the fireplace, hearth, and the floor repeatedly. My arm hit the brick corner of the chimney, and I heard my wrist snap. Grayson, no! Oh, God! She opened her jaws and threw me across the room. I 
crashed into the coffee table, my head hitting the table's edge. Blood started to drip down into my eyes. It feels that if I, like if I reach out, I'll find... I'll find Bree's hand. With a great huff, a wolf stalked toward my feet and started licking at them. Grayson, what are you? Ah! Uh -huh. There's a grating sound that rattled through my bones and echoed at the base of my skull. Grayson, you're gonna... Ah, uh, I need my... Ah! Uh. But then I saw her lupine frame hunched above my shattered leg. She wasn't licking anymore. Oh, she's... She's... Chewing my foot off. So much for talking. I hear the wet, stringy, smacking sound of the flesh and muscle being pulled away from tendon and bone as she ate at me. Did Bree feel her arm come off like this? I hope... I hope she was dead when that happened. This... This sucks. I hear the sound of tires on snow outside. Oh, no. No. Is that... My mom? But without a moment of hesitation, the werewolf ripped around and prowled towards the door. Grayson stood next to the door frame, wreathed in shadow and moonlight. Anyone coming wouldn't in wouldn't see her until it was too late. Oh god. Grayson. No. Mom. My mom. Please. It was so lightheaded I could barely get any words out. My lips were dry and cold. Mom stepped into the doorway, her worried face framed in the moonlight. Nick? Why is it dark? Is everything... <laughs> Run! Instead of running, she looked down at me and screamed. She stumbled back in her confusion, and it saved her. At least for a moment. The sweeping lunge, Grayson lurched forward, snapping at where my mother's head had been only a moment before. I could see the silhouette of the werewolf standing in the entrance, looking down at her. Nick! Nick! You have to get out of here! Please! Go! No, she couldn't hear me. Ask her to leave. I didn't have enough energy to raise my voice. I'll distract it. You can get out. Take the car. Mom, it's too late. No. I can't. Now why does she why does she get it? I can't move anywhere. <laughs> Mother hurled a chunk of snow at the werewolf and Grayson lunged. A snow that turned muted when she buried her face into my mother's body. Oh god. The last thing I saw of my mother were her terrified eyes looking back toward me as Grayson pulled her outside and away from, and away from my sight. She's. There's another scream than a gurgling sound. I couldn't see what was happening. I need to see. My mom. She's. I sat there for hours listening to the wet sounds of chewing coming from in from the front porch. Oh, Jesus. It would have been nice if she'd hurt me badly enough to bleed out. Still alive, though. So. Yeah. Lucky me. I heard a crack followed by slurping. Sucking the marrow out. <laughs> Is that me? I started laughing uncontrollably. Fuck this vacation. Sure, two days ago I had two dead best friends, but I also had two feet and two parents. It's pretty funny. Just how the hell did I end up here? <laughs> hey, Grayson, come back. I need you to end this shit. <laughs> At least I don't feel bad about finishing Tyler off anymore. I missed a foot and I want to die. His head was fucking smashed. The slurping stopped. Clawed feet scraped along the wooden floor, and a huge head looked down at me, muzzle matted in thickly dripping blood. There you are. I need you to eat me. <laughs> Werewolf licked at its chops, pacing around me, eyes flicking to different parts of my body. I hear neck is... Tasty and deadly. I took my throat up and exposed it to her. Please finish it. <laughs> no, no, she. You, my guts. Sharp fork claws were buried into my stomach. The dismissive huff she ripped me open and started rooting around inside. Oh god! I could do his twist my head back and groan. The hysterical, la the hysterical laughter still bubbled out of me in waves. <laughs> I couldn't even. I ripped my guts out. Couldn't even be quick about it. A huge paw pinning me down started to shift. I felt a twisting and popping, and there were, then there was a hand clamped tightly, clamped tight around my arm. Nick, why am I? Nick. I saw Grayson's terrified, blood-soaked face staring down at me, her eyes wide with confusion. Hi. I'm dying. <laughs> late. Too late. <laughs> 
<laughs> it curled around me, cradling my head in her hands. As she pulled me close, I heard the squelch of my own organs sliding across the floor. I wasn't feeling anything anymore. That was good. I'm sorry, Nick. Nick, come back. I'm so sorry. Yeah, me too. I don't want to be alone, alone, Nick. What am I supposed to do? Please, come back. You, you should. She started shoveling my intestines back into, into the cavity she had ripped them out of a moment before. Yeah, see, I'll make it better. Nick, I'll fix this. I'll fix it. Once you're good, we can go exploring, and my daddy will make his lunch. He ain't the good at cook, but his chili is pretty damn tasty. I bet, I bet I'll like you. No, too late. No, you take that back. It ain't too late, Nick. You'll be fine. I won't be alone, and neither will no one else. You see, uh... She kept talking, but my ears were ringing so loudly I couldn't hear her words. Instead, there were echoes of other voices rising up. Everything faded. I could hear them whispering somewhere in the back of my head. I couldn't hear Grayson anymore. Now you know what it's like. You deserved what you got. Come with us. Holy fuck, that was a whopper bad ending. Oh. 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 Hey, Grace and a bite to eat, all right? Holy shit. God damn. Oh. My God. Damn. God damn. Channel liner. Let's hear Chono. God damn. God damn. That was fucking brutal. God damn, that was fucking brutal. That just one bad ending. That just one bad ending. Oh, holy shit. I suppose next will be, uh. Uh. Sign with Felix. Sign with Felix. Uh, and now who knows how Felix is gonna react after we've rebuffed his advances. All these times, uh. Up to this point. Maybe Felix ending will change depending on whether Reaper buffed his ab his advances or hung out with him and opened up to him. I don't know. Holy shit, that was brutal as fuck. <sighs> I I know I said in the uh, in the part two that. Uh, definitely at one point in here that the uh, the level of detail the visceral detail of the violence the the gore the like was genuinely fucking unsettling to read that's for sure that that cranked that up another notch god damn let's do it again. let's do this again So our next option here is to side with Felix and see what could what could go wrong. Cause this this we aren't really endearing ourselves to Felix. We kinda not inviting him in, so. Grayson, just admit it. You did this. Uh, wh what? No, no, Nick, I never. My mom was lying down the floor and you're telling me I I knew it when I was walking in the woods with you? You were at this cabin, and you were mad at your parents. You told me yourself. Your dad did understand you. You told me that. And then I find out you told him you wanted him dead? Nick, that was just mad talk. I'd never kill my daddy. Never. She's dangerous, Nick. Maybe we should just shoot her now. I clutched the gun in my hands more tightly, but didn't raise it. I, I don't think we need to do that, Felix. I didn't kill nobody. He did! Nick, and he's gonna get you next. I'm, I'm gonna help you. Oh no. She rushed at me and grabbed the shotgun in my hands. Oh no. No, she's gonna try to kill Felix. Nick, she wants to kill me, see? 
She's a cold-blooded murderer. Shoot her. Grayson, stop. We don't know if you did anything. You can't just shoot him. I can and I will, Nick. You don't need no blood on your hands, but I gotta save you. Even if you're being a damn fool. As charming as this fight for my well-being is, I think I have to intervene. Uh-oh. You ain't gonna. I'm... <laughs> what? Grayson? She was still standing there, but her eyes had gone wide and dead. Oh, no. Then, as if in slow motion, her head toppled off her shoulders and fell to the floor at my feet. This is... wrong. How did... Felix stood behind her, looking at me with wicked satisfaction. Hello there. What's happened to him? His eyes. His hands. The moon rose and hung suspended behind him through the shattered window of the cabin. His face was a dark car caricature of the Felix I had known. There were blood-soaked talons where his fingers had been. His eyes glinted red in the darkness. You were the murderer, and now you've killed her. You've killed Grayson. Don't be daft, Nick. I did not rip up the corpse in here. What a completely classless way to finish someone off. But you... you killed her. And you're a monster. The correct word is vampire, and yes, I did kill her. I have you to thank for the distraction. I don't need a filthy mongrel like that killing my new friend. As taken with her as you may have been. Don't talk about her like that. She... she was... She was going to kill you in about 15 minutes when the moon finished rising. She was a werewolf. A truly mindless creature who ate her own parents. I see no reason to cry over a death like that. What? No. Even if, were, even if it were true, I could have done something to save her. Now I can't. Mr. and Mrs. Nash lied to me, Nick. They knew their daughter was a monster and brought her up here to keep everyone safe. At least that's what they both told me last night. Idiocy. Apparently my guests aren't worth the same considerations for safety as everyone else. Disgusting. So, you did kill them? I suppose I did finish off Mr. Nash, but he'd been bitten when I found him. His fate already sealed. Imagine letting him live to turn tonight. Two werewolves running about my property. Never. And you... you talked to Grayson's mom? At least she had the good sense to come up here to fix the problem her nasty little lies caused and finish her daughter off. I told her I would help. I did. I lured the werewolf over while Mrs. Na Ms. Nash waited. I gave her the opportunity to redeem herself. A disappointing failure. Not only, not only did she get herself killed, but she ruined one of my cabins doing it. This place will take forever to clean and repair. Just look at it. Th and then you aren't going to kill me now? Kill you? No. Nick, you're better than that. I don't want to kill you. I want you to come with me. Help me run this place. Be my companion in solitude. What? Why would I want to stay with a fucking murderer, Felix? Besides, I have a life. I can't stay up here with you. And what sort of life is that, Nick? I see them, you know. Those dreams of yours. That regret. The death wish. I see them all and I want to offer you so much more than that. He moved close to me, placing his mouth right up against my ear. I could hear the droplets of blood on his hands falling to the floor. D I'd ship it. But... This is, this is a personal thing of mine. The whole personal space. Getting up in his personal space, that's a big turn off. When you're like me, the regret stops. You don't feel it anymore. You don't dream. Uh, I, I, I used to be like you, but not anymore. I'm stronger now. That bastard will never make me whimper like a beaten dog again. I can't even dream of him anymore. That's even better than him being dead. Which he is. Who would you like to stop dreaming of, Nick? I can make it happen. He slid his bloody hand across my back, tapping the base of my spine with each curved nail as he spoke. What else are you going to do? Run home to mommy and be haunted for the rest of your miserable life? It never goes away. Never. So what do you say? 
will you take my offer? No. No, Felix, I can't take your offer. I was confused. What the hell did he think? What do you think I'd accept something like that? If it's your mother that's the issue, we can eliminate her. I hate to kill paying guests, but I'll make a special exception for her if it means you'll stay. What the hell is wrong with you? You killed Grayson and now you think killing my mom will fix that? Get the hell away from me! Then why did you make it sound like you'd stay? But he was looking angry now. What? I pointed the shotgun toward him. I never said I would stay. What the hell gave you that idea? All your creepy come-ons and... Ooh! Erg. A fitting end for one who toys so carelessly with hearts, don't you think? Eh? Huh? Although something wet and beating was clutched in his hand. What? Huh? What is... God. Vomited chunks of bile and blood onto the floor where it mingled with the gory bodies already splayed out there. I fell to the ground and Felix stepped over me. Something spattered in front of my face. Pulsed and spasmed. That heart. Ah. A pity. I thought you were the one, Nick. I'll have to visit your mother and let her know how disappointed I am in you. That... Nice guy Felix up in here. Eat your heart out. Nice guys finish last, Nicholas. You give love a bad name. Yeah, really. That's not happening. It's really uncomfortable vibes. Felix gives me. Comes on way too strong for my liking. So, let's accept. You don't dream. Not ever. I looked down at Grayson's collapsed body. If I didn't do this, she would join Bree and Tyler tonight, and every other night after. Would she be at the crash? Would they be here? In this cabin? I... I don't want to find out. Failed her, just like I've failed them. We all have our... We all have our failures but you don't have to be weighed down by them. Huh? Quit reading my mind. I... I hate you, Felix. I won't ever forgive you for what you've done. Just kill me now if that's the problem. I ran the fingers of his free hand underneath my chin, his other hand still drumming at the small of my back. I stared ahead, avoiding his gaze. Grayson looked up at me with those empty eyes from the floor. She was so full of life now. One day, maybe one day I'll be able to kill him for this. I wouldn't have it any other way. Beauty is born from adversity, you know. I think we could make something beautiful together. Okay, I'll do it. I accept. Hypnotic imprinting and hard reboot. His face split into a grin so wide it became a snarl, fangs glinting in the dark. Excellent. Then let us begin. He struck like a viper, burying those exposed fangs deep into my neck. He pressed himself against me, holding me tight as I convulsed. It doesn't hurt. It feels like I'm floating. I could stay here forever. He stopped sucking at my neck and pulled back far enough to look at me, his lips redder than they had been a moment before, his face more flushed. Oh, don't fall into it, Nick. Concentrate. You hate me, remember? I clenched my teeth, the feeling rushing back through my body. My neck was throbbing now. He's right. I have to remember. He killed Grayson. I don't fucking care if he thinks that she's a were she was a werewolf. She didn't deserve this. None of them deserved it. I won't. I won't ever forget. Good. Now that I've had yours, it's time you had mine. He raised his wrist up to his mouth and tore it open, a thick flap of corpse-hued flesh hanging loose to the side of the wound. Thick black ichor oozed slowly out as he raised it up to my lips. Drink. Don't you dare waste a drop. It smelled... good? I want to drink it. It has something to do with his biting me, but I don't have to make it easy for him. <laughs> bit into his wrist, sinking my teeth into his cold flesh. Even his blood was cool. 
so that it slushed round like ice inside his veins. A bit down harder, he could feel the taut tendons twitching and exposed inside of the wound. Ooh. Felix hissed, his nose wrinkling into a bestial snarl, and then he laughed. Trying to cause me extra pain, you will make an excellent protege. As I'm also drinking from him, I feel more like myself, but also less? How? Closed his eyes and sighed before nuzzling back into my neck and biting down into the wound he'd already made there. He stood there, a tinkled Ouroboros of hunger and feeding, heat and need. Nick's eyes are gray now. The moon rose high overhead before I wanted to stop. I looked down at Grayson again and felt cold rage burn through me. Felix still clung to my neck. I tangled my hand into his hair and yanked him off of me. He was panting, his breath warm and misting in the frigid air. I spit his wrist out of my mouth and pulled him around to look directly into my eyes. I'll fucking kill you one day. I hissed the words at him and he smiled. His skin had returned to its usual pallor. He almost looked human. It looks drunk, and my breath. It's cold. Colder than the air. No, you'll kill me one night. But not this night. Tonight, we're brothers. I threw him to the ground, then sank down to the floor myself. Shaking and overwhelmed, my veins were pulsing with what felt like ice. It's getting colder. All of it. It's all getting colder. Felix crawled next to me, looking exhausted, and shuddered. He straightened out his vest, but it was still stained in filth. He, he never told me. He never told me that doing this makes you feel... human. I don't like that. No, not at all. Not even for a moment. He? My godfather. I mean, my old master. Well, never mind what he thinks. He certainly doesn't anymore. What if I would have cared about that earlier tonight? Him feeling more human. Stupid. I'm so stupid for thinking he was alive. Thinking he was normal. He was so pale and cold from the beginning. One by one, I felt my insecurity snuff out. I was left only with the knowledge that I was powerful, that right now, for a moment, he was not. One day I'll get what I want. You'll get yours, Felix. But first I'll have you teach me everything you know. Well, come on. We don't want to be out when the sun comes up. Be careful. You feel all powerful now, but it doesn't last. We both need rest. He stood up and tried to look composed, but I saw the stumble, the slight tremble in his lips, a small amount of fear mingled with excitement on his face. I followed him through the snow, and he gestured over to a small home off, the, off to the side. My old family home. Far too shabby for me, so the caretaker lives there. We'll have to hire a new one now. Grayson and her dad live there. There was no need to speak that wretched creature's name. I lashed out, grabbing at him and pulling him back towards me. Fingers dug so deeply into his shoulder that I could feel his bones creaking under my grip. I'll say whatever names I fucking want, Felix. His eyes locked with mine and he swallowed. That's quite enough of that. Come now, let me show you the main house. It's just up ahead. Good. He's afraid of me. Yeah, show me. Let's go. Once you show me everything, I'll have one last thing to show you. My fist to your face. Through your face. An immodest proposal. Yep, take Felix up on his offer. So, sleep over. How oh, I met your mother. That is... Interesting. Let me go about doing that. I suppose my next move is going to be... Doing all the Felix events. And then siding with Felix? Perhaps? One thing I have skipped over. Look at the head. Face has been reduced to ribbons of deep red gouges. The only way I could tell where the eyes used to be was the white ridge of an exposed brow bone above the white socket. The entire lower half of the jaw had been ripped off for the rest of the face. That fleshy lump over there might be the rest of the jaw. Not like it matters. Well, that was brutal. I'm gonna be, think I'm gonna be sick. I don't need to see that again. Interesting. Interestingly, with uh, Felix affection, 
Grayson rushed over and grabbed at the gun again, successfully this time. Nick, you... You shot. Why? Her blood coated me in a fine mist. She toppled to the floor, shotgun pellets sizzling in her flesh. Grayson, no! I tried to yell, but instead I stood there, silently looking down at her dying on the floor. My expression was cold and lax. She stared up at me, chest heaving, the rattling of her breath growing more and more shallow. Till with one final gasp, she stopped moving. I was worried you wouldn't do that for a moment. Good boy, listening to instructions. Well, he walked his fingers along my shoulder and wiped away a spatter of blood from my cheek. Hmm. So this is going to be not good. <laughs> this is going to be not ideal in the slightest, eh? <laughs> sure feels like that. <laughs> Why? Why can't I move? And I... shot Grayson. I can feel you thrashing about in there, Nick. You have to let go for this to last. So we let Felix in every time this time. So he's got control over us to some degree. Why would I do that? Grayson is... I have to kill this guy. Grayson is dead, Nick. It's only us now. No, he's done something to me. I can't. Yes. Now we can finally be alone. Words fell from my mouth with nothing but apathy, even as the pool under Grayson's body spread around the soles of my shoes. Time to go, Nick. No. My jaw felt like it was going to break spitting out that one word, but I had done it. I'm going to tell you once, Nick. Pick me. Fall into my voice. Drown into it. You do that and you'll never feel anything but contentment. Abandon your regret. Maybe one day I'll even let you out again, just as my master allowed me. He bit into my neck and I felt a wave of warmth pass through me. Ooh, we can resist. Resist! Now if I just... push. I took a stumbling step away from Felix. The fine until the end, I see. Well, you leave me no choice. Come grabbed me by the front of my jacket and pulled me outside. I let my feet hang limp. They smeared a trail of Grayson's blood across the already destroyed cabin. Ah, uh, hello. He stared down at me, his skin shifting from porcelain pale to the gray blue of a long dead corpse. The red glow of his eyes ate deep into my mind. Give in, Nick. You're already mine. Don't make me hurt you. I stood there, staring blankly back at him. When he reached out to touch my face, I pulled my head back to avoid him. The muscles in my neck creaked as they fought to remain in place. Tch, you've brought this on yourself. Come. I followed him, falling into the snow and tripping over my own feet as I tried to resist the need to stay by his side. Where are we? No. My cabin. Can I come in, Nick? No. Yes. Felix walked me back into the cabin where he sat me down on the couch, bit into my neck on the opposite side and drank in more blood. I found myself leaning into him, eyes half-lidded, breathing shallow. No, he's... he's... I can't stop him. I have to try to fight. I jerked away and woodenly fell to the floor. I can hardly move unless he wants me to. Sit back up. It's about to be a show just for you. Unless you want to give in now. It will save us all some needless suffering and unpleasantries. I sat rigidly on the floor, willing my joints to stay frozen, sniffed indignantly and yanked me up, propping me crookedly on the side of the couch. I heard the sound of tires on snow. Mom. No. One more chance, Nick. Either way, I'll bring you to heal. How? How can I give him what he wants? I need to save her. Felix stood and walked over to the front door. He casually looked, leaned up against the door frame and shook his head regretfully. Seems like you need a better reason to give up, Nick. Let me tell you. Let me give you one. Tell me. What happened at the accident? With the arm? Door opened. I'm back. That snowstorm, really. Ah! 
Felix grabbed my mother's right arm in a vice-like grip and she cried out, struggling to break free. Nick, what's happening? Tell me, Nick, what happened to the arm? Don't tell him. If I tell him... I tried to pull Bree over, it came off. Oh, that's too bad. Like this? <laughs> oh, jeez. It was a ripping and popping sound as Felix lazily detached my mother's arm from her body. She screamed and would have fallen to the floor if Felix hadn't grabbed the back of her jacket and propped her up. Show me how you held it. He threw her arm over and I caught it, cradling it in my arms, pressing my face against its bloody stump. It was warm and I could feel the muscles and nerves still twitching under the skin, confused at their sudden disconnection from their owner. That's fucked up. <laughs> That's fucked up. Tears started streaming down my cheeks, but I couldn't speak any, except in answer to Felix's questions. I tried to look anywhere but at my mother. My head wouldn't move. This... this can't be real. I have to get away. I have to. And Tyler? Where was he hurt, Nick? Oh no, don't do this. No, don't do that! I reached up and pointed to my head. My mother had started whimpering. My eyes were blank with shock at the loss of her arm. Like this. <sighs> He's grabbed her head and smashed it into the corner of the brick fireplace, sending her crumpling to the ground, twitching. The side of her skull was folded in on itself, deep crease pooling with blood at the point of impact. Show me what you did then, Nick. Your mercy kill. I stood up and took my jacket off, walked over to her, to her crumpled, gasping form. A line of drool slid from her lips. Jesus. Can't. Can't do this. I need to run. I can't do this again. You can always run, Felix. Nick. Don't you see it? I've given you a way out. You don't have to feel this way. Back of my mind, I felt a numbness radiating out at the source of Felix's influence. I could just go there. I could just stay there. I wrapped my jacket around her head and pressed down. She stopped moving, but I no longer cared. It's safe here. I can't feel them anymore. I don't have to do anything, but... That's good, Nick. That's good. Come with me and you'll stay safe. But if you leave... For a flash, everything weighed down on me at once, and I screamed. Tyler, Bree, Grayson, my mom. I felt them all die by my hands all at once. The misshapen lump of my mother's head twitched one last time. No, no, let me go back. I need to go back. You didn't say the magic word. Please, please, I'll do anything. Just let me go back. I can't do this. I tried to shove myself into that dark space. I had been in only moments before, but it was gone. Nick spread his arms out wide. Come here. Come to me, and I'll let you go back there. Shaky and dizzy, I stumbled towards him. I clutched desperately at his vest, and he set his bloody hand down gently on the top of my head, stroking my hair. Look at me. I looked up and gazed deep into his glowing eyes. I felt that cavern of numbness open back up inside of me. See? Look, it's right here. I whimpered and curled back into the freeing apathy that Felix offered. Do anything. Any for... Anything. For... The thought had disappeared. There was no, there was no more need to wonder about anything at all. Felix would do it for me. All I had to do, all I had to do, was listen. Whew. How I met your mother, indeed. So the best possible, uh, Felix solo ending is, uh, the immodest proposal. Where we, uh, you know, who <sighs> where? Where we don't let Felix in. We don't let Felix in. And we resist him. He doesn't have that control over us. We give in to him willingly.
and we live to resist him. And he's, uh, and he's very clearly in fear of the lack of control he has over us. If we give up, I should just listen to... I slumped down into his bite and felt a warm trickle of blood drip down my collarbone. See? Isn't that better? Everything is fine. Come. There was the crunch of snow beneath my feet. We're outside now. I looked up at him and he gazed down at me, benevolent and understanding. The shadow of Grayson's face floated into my mind's eye, then Tyler and Bree followed. All of them stared at me with an accusation in their eyes. I whimpered. Oh no, that won't do. Go deeper, where they can't find you. Here. He gently placed a hand on my shoulder and stared directly into my eyes. I felt myself falling into that case. It was as if a cavern had opened up at the back of my skull, a place of darkness and safety. I knew Felix was in there waiting for me, arms outstretched. I need to go there. I'll be safe there. He'll keep me safe. Let me take your pain. I can suffer for you. There's no need for you to destroy yourself with grief. I... I was suffering? Felix smiled. You were, but no longer. It's over now. Forget. You're so much more than those old memories. Would you like to see your new home? I've... a home? With you? Of course you do. Ever since the death of my master, I've been looking for someone like you. Someone who is special. Someone like me. Everything within me radiated joy. He wanted me. I was special. I would never have to leave his side. I grabbed his hand reverently, but he pulled it away, shaking his head in disappointment. With calculated ease, he slapped me across the face and sent me sprawling towards the ground. Then in a crystallized pool of blood, my hand pressed into an old paw print. You do not touch me until as, unless I give permission. I'm sorry, please, don't leave me. Tears streamed down my cheeks. If he leaves me, I'll be alone, and those faces, they'll start looking at me again. He bent down and looked at me straight in the eyes. I started to reach out, then hesitated. Permission. I needed permission. He then smiled and reached out twirling a piece of my hair between his fingers before offering his hand to me. See? That wasn't so hard. Here, let me help you up. I grasped his hand and everything was right once more. He pulled me up and I stood there, gore spattered and beaming. Now come with me and I will show you what it is like to be free. I'm already free. Of course you are. Because you are mine. Yeah, that's a bad end. Yeah. There it is. There it is. Surrender to Felix's mind control. Not a fan of that. Not a fan of that at all. <sighs> oh. One more ending. I'm not entirely sure how to do that. But there is the one thing I do want to do, and that's, uh, convince Grayson to stay with us. To see if that changes anything. Now, if we tell her about the accident... This past summer, I... I watched my best friends die. I whispered the words so softly they were almost lost in the breeze. Grayson still heard them, though, and she went quiet, her eyes going wide. It was a... a car accident. They... wasn't looked up when she stepped back at the expression on my face. The way they looked, at, they, the way they, they looked, it was wrong. Her arm was... His head was... I... What am I trying to say is that after it happened, I thought I wanted to be alone, but every time I am... It's worse, Grayson. It's so much worse. You... You don't want to be alone. Not really. She reached out to me and grabbed my hands. Her touch was so warm and alive. Tears were falling down her cheeks again. I don't know if it'll make me feel better to come with you, Nick, but I don't think it'll make me feel worse, and if I go off alone, then you're going to be alone too, huh? 
Just, you sweetheart. Oh, uh, no, no, that's not what I meant. That's what I've been seeing on your face, huh? All the times you've been looking after you. You were seeing your friends. You don't have to worry about me. I think worrying about you is just not the only thing keeping me dead. Keeping me dead. Blah, 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 blah. I think worrying about you is just about the only thing keeping me together right now. She smiled and it was so full of sorrow that I burst into tears. Oh, why am I crying? It's her dad that's dead. I've had four months to get over my crap. This is so embarrassing. Come on, let's go back to your cabin. I'm sure I got lots more crying to do myself once we get there. We walked back in silence. Occasionally one of us would take a shuddering breath and we would lean into one another. She broke down twice, and each time I stood there, let her sob into my shoulder. Gotta make sure we avoid that deer. Neither of us needs to see any more corpses right now. When we got back to the cabin, the lights were still on. I left the TV on in the bedroom and it was playing a talk show rerun. I thought I forgot to turn everything off. I don't know if I could handle it being quiet in here. I'm gonna lay down for a bit. I slept real bad last night. And now... Well... Is it right if I use one of the beds? Yeah, sure. Can I leave the bedroom door open? She nodded. This so long as it's the right to leave the TV on. I'm thinking it helps. Yeah, I think so too. She went wearily over to the unmade bed I had slept in the night before and curled up in a ball, her head buried in the pillow. I pulled my phone and saw that the video app was still open. I closed it out and pulled up a cheery-looking bubble-matching game. Perfect. Just zone out and try not to think. Hours passed that way. I matched the colored bubbles in the living room. I looked over at Grayson every now and then. And so she doesn't wake up when the moon rises. I'd fallen asleep in a way that only a person consumed by grief could. It was a sleep that was both restless and deep, like being drowned at the bottom of the sea. The sun was setting now. There were no sign of my mom. The, moon, the road must still be closed like the news had forecasted earlier. Knock, knock. I jumped at the sound and looked over at Grayson, but she was still asleep. I went over and closed the bedroom door so I wouldn't wake her. I forgot. But I thought we told him. I thought we told him no. So. Uh, yeah, hold on. Let me see if Grayson wants to come. He looks surprised. Miss Nash, I mean, Grayson, is here. Does she know? Y you know her? And know about what? The body? Yeah, she was there. It was her father. So it was Mr. Nash. That's unfortunate. Very, very unfortunate. Well, I suppose you could go check on her then. I went, to go, I went to go tell Grayson I was leaving, but she was so still so deeply asleep that I didn't want to wake her. She probably won't be able to sleep like that very often anymore. Not with that, not with what happened. I better not bother her. She's still asleep. Might as well let her, since, well, we might not even find a phone. Don't want to get her hopes up. Very well. Shall we? Hmm. This is interesting. Leave her a note. Sure, just give me a second to leave her a note and we can go. Scribbled out a quick, I scribbled out a quick note and left it in the middle of the small dining table in the front room. Went with Felix to look for a way to call the police. Be back soon, Nick. I met Felix outside and we started the walk over to the nearest cabin, which was about a half a mile away. Alright, let's move through here. Do 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 do. Change the subject. Go right in. Go into the cabin. Have the body. Get the gun. Hi, Grayson. I I fucking paused the recording and then started talking like I, I just unpaused the recording. Uh, Grayson, you were out last night too. Yeah, I was. I was went walking. I needed to get out of the house, so I left to cool off. Cool off from what? She looked incredibly sad and stared straight at me so as to not see the body on the floor. I got in a real yelling match with my daddy. I just... just wanted to see my mom, you know? In the city. 
He was telling me he ain't never gonna let me go because he needed me here. And I... I told him he should just drop dead and then I could go where I wanted. A and I left. Nick, the last thing I ever told him was that he should die. He tried to stop me, too. He was telling me I was grounded and couldn't leave. I... went to my room and lifted out the window before he noticed. What did you do when you went out? When you were out? Just walking around. You know, I was real pissed, so I kinda kicked at some snow and rocks. Just stuff like that. Ran into Felix and he was being right rotten like he was now. Asking about how my mom is when he knows she left. He started shaking uncontrollably again when she mentioned her mom. He's supposed to be trying to think about what's... what's on the floor behind us. Okay, well, let's move along. I don't know how this would change. I believe you. This does not give us the true path. And this just gets us... so. Oh. We getting mold. Went flying across the room and hit the couch. She twisted her head to the side, looking at me with alien eyes. The shotgun I had been holding when she threw me clattered to the floor halfway between the door and the couch. Oh, we could still. The gun. It's too far. I can't stand up. Just like before. She took a step toward me. Grayson, don't do this. We're in this together, right? We killed that bastard, and now we're gonna get out of here. Did you see the police? We can go. Go get lunch at the big city. Bet you'd like a super fancy burger or something, right? Try my best to sound calm and stay motionless. If I do anything wrong, she'll attack. No. Out of nowhere, she whipped around and clamped onto my shoulder, shaking me back and forth like a rag doll. Grayson, that hurts. Please. I know you don't like hurting people. She let go. A small whimper, like a crying puppy, escaped her throat. In the snarl of frustration, she struck out of the couch and ripped it open. Stuffing flew everywhere. That stuffing would have been my guts if she'd hit me. Yeah, see? We don't want to hurt anyone. We'll just stay like this for a few hours and then you'll be human again and we can just laugh about this. He's a werewolf, though. No werewolf bites. The sound of tires on snow outside. Oh, no. No. No, of all the times she could come back, not now. Grayson, listen to me. That's my mom. You have to leave her alone. Do not hurt her. My teeth were clenched. My leg was starting to throb. At a moment of hesitation, the werewolf whipped around and prowled towards the door. Grayson stood next to the door frame, wreathed in shadow and moonlight. Anyone coming in wouldn't see her until it was too late. Do not. I'm telling you, Grayson, leave her alone. Mom stepped into the door, her worried face framed in the moonlight. Nick? Why is it dark? Is everything... Mom, run! She just stood there looking worried and confused and reached her hand out for the light switch. He just said one time, listen to me. Nick, if you need help... Grayson struck. Fastening her mouth around my mom's outstretched arm. Uh-oh. Grayson, please, that's my mom. You have to let her go. We'd be friends forever if you just let her go. Her voice sounded strangely calm even to my own ears. I couldn't panic. Now it might cost me one of my la one of the last remaining things that was good in my life. Mom, don't struggle. I can't get her to let you go. But if she does, Mom, you have to go. I can't come with you. She'll kill me if I move too fast. Understand? Mother nodded, and I felt a wave of relief pass through me. She might actually survive this. Grayson, you don't want her. We're friends, remember? We were going to spend the time together. She's going to leave now, okay? Can you let her go so she can leave? Slowly. With a hesitation that made my mouth dry with terror, she opened her jaws and my mom's arms slipped out. Now we just have to get her to actually leave. Go, now. Please. If you stay, it's gonna get us both killed. Honey, I can't just... You can and you're going to do it right now! I stared daggers at her and she took a choking gulp of air. I'll be back for you. I'll get help. She whispered those final soothing words to me as she slipped out into the night and back to the car. Grayson snarled and went to the door where the engine turned. Don't worry about her. Now we can hang out. Just you and me. The werewolf prowled over and stood next to me, looking down with hungry eyes, glinting in the dark. 
Well, I guess if I die here, I won't have to worry about all the things that suck about living. She didn't bite me anymore. Instead, she periodically lashed out at the furniture. The end table. A lane. Each time giving off a strange yowl that sounded almost human as each piece of furniture disintegrated under her paws. Even someone like her, she, even she can't handle it. She's dangerous. Too dangerous. And she's bitten me. I think blurred into an endless night. She raged and ruined my while I whispered reassurances. Eventually, the Morden came. She's changing back now. I think. I think I know what I have to do. What we have to do. Oh no. Folded back into herself like a gory flower returning to a bud. Muscles wrapping inwards. Body shrinking back into the grace that I knew. She clapped onto the floor, retching. Nick, what? Uh, I was feeling sick and... Did the cops make it? Is your mom here? I couldn't help it. I laughed. No. No, they didn't make it up here. We're, uh, we're fucked. She looked scared. I don't know what you mean. She trailed off. Of, she trailed off as she took in the ruin that remained of the cabin. Torn furniture everywhere. My leg limp and twisted at an angle that nobody with an intact bone could manage. Felix was half right. I'm sure he hung your dad. But you're a werewolf, Grayson. And if you're a werewolf, then... Then I killed my mama, and I... When Ashen and her jaw started to quiver, her voice came out the smallest I had ever heard of it. Her eyes were fixed on the very obvious bite mark on my shoulder. I... I bit you? Yes, you did. I had all night to think about it, and... If I killed my mama, then... I, I gotta pay for it, Nick. But it's us now. Us? You bit me. That's how this works, right? Didn't you get bit? On a camping trip a couple of years ago. Right before my dad took this job. Some huge wolf. And Nick, this whole time, were they lying to me? Your dad must have had a way to restrain you. Your parents had to know. Why else wouldn't he let you move to the city? Why else would your mom come up here with a shotgun when you got on a, out on a full moon? They, they, he should have killed me. Almost there. I almost have her. Maybe. I have it now too, right? It has to be both of us. Maybe my mom too, but... No. I didn't see any blood. She'll be fine. She's always fine. Nick, where's that gun? I dropped it when... Uh, you threw me. There's only one bullet left, though. So I need you to do me a favor. The bedroom is my, my luggage. There's a full bottle of medication in there. A really strong anxiety stuff. Can you get that for me along with some water? Oh, Nick. Nick, are you gonna? Please, I bet you could live your whole life and not kill nobody. Grayson, listen. You're a good person. You're a better person than I am. And if you can't, and if you can't control this, well... Let's just say I know myself well enough to say that I'd be worse. I killed my two best friends with these human hands. If I had claws. You're... You're gonna come with me, then? We just met. You don't know. Maybe you won't change, Nick. Grayson, I'll... I'll change. Trust me. Now, please, go get that medication. Let me do this. She nodded and gathered everything up. She sat there, the gun propped against the wall next to her while she cradled my head in her lap. I swallowed the entire bottle of pills while she looked down at me. Nick, I'm so sorry. I didn't mean for this. I would have just let you kill me if I'd known. There ain't no life worth living when you can hurt people like this. Don't worry about it. I mean... You're still a pretty good friend. You didn't kill my mom when you could have. The thing was getting fuzzy now. Harder to breathe. But it was so warm and comfortable. A heavy pillow was being pressed down on my entire body. At least my legs didn't hurt anymore. She laughed, choking back tears. I, I didn't. That's a pretty low bar. Not killing your mom. Yeah. But it was... Important bar. Getting pretty blurry now. I'm so heavy. I'll watch it till I know it's you're done, and I'll be coming with you. If you want me around, that is. Of course I do. I ruin everything. So I get it if you don't want to hang out and be, uh, well, you know. <sighs> you can come.
The ceiling was so far away. All I wanted to do was close my eyes. So heavy. Once I closed them, I couldn't get them open again. Oh well. I think I was supposed to be sleeping. Who needs eyes that open anyway? The echoing distance somewhere above my head, I heard a shot ring out. A heavy weight pressed down over me. Jeez. This hurts. More warm pressure. That's okay. We could both go to sleep. We can both just... Sleep. Ah! God! Keep over and lost in the woods. That's the last ending, I believe. Ooh, what's this? Lights flashed around me. Neon and carefree. I stared down at my feet. Intently focused on the fraying edges of my old sneakers, the ones where my little toe had almost rubbed a hole through the canvas. Mama tried to get me to throw them away after high school, but they still fit. They were comfortable. They might have been for time before college. Not like she could tell me what to do anymore. I was out of the house and living with roommates. Yeah, to split the split rent with Tyler and Bree, right? I think that's right. I'm looking at my shoes anyway. I'm supposed to be having fun. I think this was my idea. Bree sat next to me, sipping something pink and tropical. She was looking across the room at the bar, her brow furrowed. A slight scowl on her face as she eyed Felix's rigid back. Felix is being a downer. Again. Go bring him over so I can force him to have fun. I rolled my eyes. Why is it always me? Can't Tyler do it this time? Tyler's over there having a great time picking up girls. Besides, you invited Felix, remember? Something about how he needs to get out and live a little. I guess I remember that. Sounds like something I would do. Alright, okay, 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 you're right. Have you seen Grayson? She was supposed to meet us here. Bree's face lit up. I did, actually. She got real excited about some featured drink and ran off. Speaking of, bring me something new. It's payment for dealing with your silly, your sulky frenemy. She shoved me in Felix's direction. Took a stumbling step forward before turning back to grin at her. You want a beer, then? This is my cocktail night. Don't you dare. Save the beers for yourself. Just pick something off the specials list. Fine, fine. No beer for Bree. I... Hello there. Light in the club shifted and I could make Felix out more clearly than the rest of the room. You see, he was leaning against the bar, eyes scanning the dance floor, lips pressed together in aloof judgment. The flashes of color all around only served to make him look more pale and out of place. Hey, dude! We want you to hang out, come on! Is that not what I'm doing? I'm here in this cursed and noisy place. What more could you want? This isn't hanging out, this is called bringing down the mood. I didn't want to come to this party. You pulled me in here. You're thinking of going back to our place after. Maybe play a board game or something? You like those at least, right? Not tonight. Maybe I'll come come by some other time and visit you in that dreadful RV you purchased. You'd only imagine it after all. What are you talking about, man? I'm roommates with Tyler and Bree. Grayson's about to move into the spare bedroom. I sniffed. Eyes rooming intently across my shirt before sliding back down to stare into his half-full drink. It was as if he couldn't bring himself to look me in the eyes. You would like that. I see you left me out. If you own all those cabins, I'd think you'd want to move to the city. <laughs> There's a difference between wanting to move and wanting an invitation to move. Ah, you're impossible. So you wanted the invite just to turn it down. You heard what I said. I think you know what I want. I'm a vampire. I need to be invited. Honestly, I don't know why I bother with you sometimes. I took a sip of beer and glanced around for Grayson. She's always good at breaking up tense conversations, but I didn't see her anywhere. Felix shrugged, a small smirk playing at the edges of his lips. I have a way with people. Invitations are my specialty. Okay. True. But well, I'm actually surprised you invited me here. I wasn't planning on haunting any dreams tonight. He ran his finger across the rim of his martini glass. What is this club music? At least you got me a suitable beverage. I think I would have liked these. That one of them... That one of them martini things? Uh, yeah! There she is. Grayson leaned over to look, nose practically in Felix's drink. Felix pulled it away from her, ex exhaling in frustration. 
It was all about the city. So of course he got you your favorite thing. You see what I found? A fucking, <laughs> a fucking pineapple. <laughs> That's precious. It matches your hair. She held the pina colada in a hollowed up pineapple. The absolute disgust flashed across Felix's face. You got the tackiest thing Nick could think up, I see. Oh, I can't believe you invited that nasty little. I could feel the muscles in my neck tightening. It sounded too similar. Too much like that night. No, that was no night like that. That's why we're here. Because there was no night where... Felix sighed. Nick's having good dreams this time. I mean, it's a pleasure to see you. I heard you're moving to the city. Away from cabins. That's right. Got my things packed and all. That's a little sad, but he'll be alright. Or perhaps I'll miss you once you're gone. You'll never, you never know. Y'all, I think we gotta have a big old moving party up in the mountains. It's off-season, so ain't nobody there. Who is this we you think would be hosting? This looks like a fine party right here. No need for you to haunt my place of residence. Why can't you at least dance with us now? I've been waiting so long to dance with all my friends. It feels like years since I've been around so many people. No, I won't. I suppose you think this is funny, Nick. Making me follow your little script. What are you talking about? Why not? Let loose a little. I am not a puppet on a string. Not anymore. You leave me out of this. Go fly around with your, all your other imaginary friends. Yeah, Felix, what are you waiting for? You gotta dance. Grayson looked up at him, eyes pleading, a small, hopeful smile on her face. That's weird. It's actually like didn't hear the last thing he said. Don't work on me, Grayson. It never did. Oh, don't be like that. It ain't too late to change things. Dance. It'll be fun. That's where you're wrong. It's been too late for a long time. And I felt it. A tag in my mouth that meant I'd been biting at the sides of my cheeks in my sleep. I could feel myself surfacing from the dream, but I fought against it. I'd rather breathe in and drown if it meant I could stay. No, I need to. Oh, no. I need to tell her that I... I want to dance with them. I want to stay. I reached toward Grayson's blurring form, but the moment was dissolving around me and I couldn't get any closer. That bright smile, those eyes glittering with an understanding I never deserved. Oh. Felix stood beside her, judging me for leaving, knowing I wasn't there to begin with. I was the trespasser invading this frozen piece of unreality. I was struck by a sudden knowledge that this was why he had refused to dance. Was he also a trespasser here? Or had I made that small hell of barbed comments up for myself? Gray said no. As the rest of the room crumbled away, he stood there for a moment longer. I don't know why you've been bothering, but I can see you've been looking for answers about me. There should be enough out there for you to find it. Nobody else can see it because they have the dates wrong. I don't see how you can fix anything with it, though. The only true answer is to stop caring, or hate me completely. I'm not, I'm not redeemable. Take me back there, I want to go back. Don't you get it? I don't have that power. I don't have anything anymore. He shook his head and disappeared with the rest of the dream. I was awake now, but I kept my eyes closed. Groggy half-sleep still clouding my mind, convincing me I could go back if I just drifted off again. I can never decide if these are my favorite dreams. Worst nightmares. Or both. Cracked lips split into a painfully partial self-loathing smile. <laughs> Who the fuck am I kidding? It's definitely both. That final image of Felix floated in front of my mind's eye again. It seemed different than usual. Almost as if it really was him. Maybe that means I'm getting close. Well... Well, well, well. I was not expecting that. Oh. That's going to be it for up all night, I believe. We should leave off on that note. This is very clearly... Very clearly. Post true ending there, so to speak. Very clearly a Nick trying to... 
Even after getting that rousing pep talk from Grayson. In the true ending. It is very much... Nick still struggling with these dreams. Going from being uh, stuck, recalling his trauma and those he lost, to uh, being stuck, longing for the good times and the lie, the good times that he never got to have with all of his friends. Perhaps we will see how uh, Nick ends up dealing with these feelings further down the line after surviving his encounter with a uh, lonely and possessive vampire and a uh, lonely and uh, desperate for companionship werewolf losing both of them to their respective curses and coming away from it with the motivation to uh, live his life for all the good times they never had. And now it seems like he's struggling with these dreams of... these dreams of the good times that they never had. And what's curious about that is... there's clearly the implication that... Uh, Felix is more aware of being in these dreams than you might expect from a memory of a person in a dream. I wonder if that's gonna... wonder if that's significant. I suppose there's only one way to find out, and that's to play uh, Fiendish Fiction's uh, submission to this year's visual novel, Spooktober Game Jam. and see what happens to poor Nick further down the line. We will certainly see what happens. He may have made it off the mountain, but perhaps he will still be up all night. Until next time. Until then. Thanks for watching. <laughs>